This little chinchilla is about to be a problem. Chinchina returned and received some crazy buffs from the Indigo Disc DLC. It now gets access to the move Tidy Up, which removes hazards from the field, but also gives a plus one boost to both attack and speed. At base 115, after a Tidy Up, it now outspeeds a ton of Choice Scarf opponents, but one of the craziest things it can exploit is the Loaded Dice item. This held item guarantees that multi-hit moves hit four or five times. This now frees up Chinchino's ability since it basically has a built-in skill link and can now run Technician. Technician boosts any moves that are 60 power or less, including moves like Tail Slap, by 50%. By boosting each individual 25 power hit, it now gets an insane power of 187 if it hits the five times, without even factoring in Stab plus extra Terra Normal damage. It also gets coverage with both Bullet Seed and Rock Blast, and Chinchino is actually cracked now. All right, look, there's a ton of Pokemon that came with some fresh buffs from the new DLC. I plan to eventually try them all out on the channel. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. Today, I've got a super good match for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the chewed piece of bubblegum, the Clefable. This thing has been tormenting me for like 25 years, just an absolute problem. But I decided to lead off with the Golurk, and this actually puts me in a super great situation to just go right for the trick. What that's gonna do, is put a choice band on Clefable, make him look silly, and uh, that's actually, it's really gonna hinder what this thing can do. A Clefable that can't change its moves is a non-threatening Clefable. Ideally, a dead Clefable is the best kind of Clefable. They take this opportunity just to set up the Stealth Rock, and uh, knowing that they are now choice banded into that Stealth Rock, they're probably gonna go ahead and end up switching out here, and this is gonna allow me to set up my Stealth Rock essentially for free. So we're feeling pretty good here. I stole that thing's item, gave it a choice band, and we're in actually a pretty good spot, as they decide to switch into the Blastoise. And listen, I don't know what they did to Blastoise, but Buddy is looking absolutely menacing in this game, and I'm kind of here for it. The Blastoise love is actually super sick. This looks badass in this game, and uh, this is not the kind of turtle you want to piss off. So, here's the thing. I'm considering the fact that this could potentially be a Shell Smash Blastoise, and if it is, I expected them to likely go for that there and then I had to kind of just stay in and get some damage. If I could get enough chip to the point where something in the back like the Hitmonlee could take care of it, uh, it would be ideal. But they actually just go for the flip turn, new access to that move, as I go for the Poltergeist on the incoming Hydreigon. And while I do get some decent damage, the most important thing is we actually notice that I do attack him with his own Choice Scarf. Now, first of all, it's fun to beat the shit out of each individual head with a Choice Scarf, but it actually, now I kind of know what this thing is working with. Knowing, you know, having the intel, that this thing is Scarf and gonna be a fast set, I can kind of work around that. So, I also, I don't have a lot that wants to switch into this thing, and the three-headed dragon is actually kind of a problem at this point. So, I decided to let him take care of the Golurk. Um, at this point, it was like, it wasn't really worth it to switch into my special tank if they predicted that and went for something like a Draco Meteor. Uh, the Hydrapple is going to have a bad time. But at this point, I can get a free switch into it, and this is a much better spot to be in, because they can't really stay in and go for that Dark Pulse. They just leave themselves open for the Fickle Beam. However, they, of course, do have the fairy type in the Clefable in the back, so I have to play around that at this point, and I decide to go for the Energy Ball, expecting them to go back into that Clefable. Whenever there's a Clefable around, or just a fairy type in general, Hydrapple uh, has to make some interesting plays. I go for the Energy Ball here. They do make the predictable play and go into the Clefable. Energy Ball is still going to do a decent chunk to the fella. He, she's thick over there, but never too thick for these balls of energy. I, someone take my microphone away from me. Anyway, I decide to stay in here because I know that a Moonblast actually doesn't even do that much to me, but what it does do in Clefable fashion is gets the special attack drop to allow it to not be able to grab the knockout there. So that's extremely annoying. I decide to switch out the Hydrapple here, mostly just because with my regenerator ability, I can get a lot of that health back. And upon switch in, we're going to be looking pretty healthy. So I decide to go into Feraligator. Me and my booty cheeks are out here ready. They go for that Moonblast. I know I can take at least one of them. They get another meaningless special attack drop, but um, now I can easily just outspeed. I go for the Liquidation, and at this point, they're just going to sack the Fable. Got enough chip damage to the point where it's not going to be fast enough to make a difference. So that thing being gone is actually amazing. It does a few things. It opens up the, the team essentially for two of my Pokemon, the Apple plus the Gouging Fire. So... On the free switch, they now decide to go in, back into the Blastoise, and we've only seen this thing flip turn. I'm still really afraid of it going for a Shell Smash, so I decided to stay and go for a Crunch, but it's actually going to go for the Rapid Spin. So that is interesting to know. We've seen flip turn, Rapid Spin. That tells me this is not going to be an offensive one. Plus, judging by how that thing literally just ate the shit out of that Crunch, it, it's feeling like this thing is definitely a defensive... Uh, <laughs> more utility Blastoise. So I now decide to just go for the Dragon Dance. I figure, you know what? 
He probably doesn't have anything that can knock me out here and I can get an attack boost, but he just ends up yelling at me and for alligator does not like the confrontation in that it forces a switch. So unfortunate there, but it's actually, it's good to know kind of what this Blastoise is working with because this is gonna bring in the absolute goat Chinchino. Now this thing is the janitor because we're here to we're here to chew bubblegum and sweep up these floors and we're all out of bubblegum and these floors are looking like shit. So I decided at this point I can go for a tidy up. If they do end up going for the roar, I figure that's fine, but I'm just going to tidy up and see if I can make it happen. I sweep it up over here, nice and sparkly clean, and that is going to give us the nice little, basically, I, I like to pretend like he's going for his own little dragon dance with his broom. I get the attack boost, I grab the speed boost, and we are out here in full form. But they're going to go for the flip turn, and since they get the slower flip turn, now they basically get the safe switch into whatever they like, and in comes the high dragon. So, we saw that this thing is choice scarf, however... Chinchino's little hamster ass, chinchilla ass, is in fact faster after a tidy up than a choice scarf um, high dragon. So I can go for the tail slap, we connect, and uh, after one being a crit, two's gonna finish him off, and we still had a we still had a four a couple tucked in the chamber. Chinchino is not playing games out here. You do not want to test this man. So that's gonna take care of that thing. Huge threat out of the way again. Probably one of the more scarier mons on either side. And at this point now they get a switch into the Toro. So. We're a couple little normal type fellas, and I'm thinking I'm going to unleash the absolute nuke that is plus one attack, technician boosted, double stab, terra normal tail slap. Pokemon is getting insane, honestly, at this point. I put the diamond on my head. Damn, he'd be kind of fresh, though. And um, it's actually kind of unnecessary damage at this point. I think it actually kills even without the terra. I just... At this point, looking at their team, Chinchino actually absolutely pops off. One does literally nearly half to it. We got th at least three more in the chamber, and that is going to be a dead Toro. So, Cantonian Toros absolutely did not want the smoke, and we are in prime shape with the Chinchino here. So, we hit it three times. We are still sitting at enough health to where I'm feeling pretty confident. So, they're actually going to end up going into the Metagross here, and I'm still feeling like I can actually do some pretty solid damage with the Tail Slap here. And at above half health, I should be able to take a bullet punch, even if it's adamant. However, it is going to knock me out with the bullet punch. And knowing the calculation there, that tells me that this is going to be a choice banded Metagross. And that is the one thing uh, to ruin Chinchilla's day. So the janitor does go down, but not before we made a nice little splash in the squad. We got rid of the hazards and we knocked out two big threats. So at this point, I get a free switch and I decide to go into... The gouging fire so i activate the protosynthesis here it gives me a nice little attack boost i know that i can take pretty much any attack from this thing and fire off just an absolute insane flare blitz but i'm actually just going to go for the burning bulwark here if this thing turns out to not be choice banned i'm going to have a bad time so i just decide to scout but they're actually just going to switch back into the blastoise so of course i can't really go for the protect here but i'm still in a decent position i know that this is it's bulky turtle, but I do have a plus one attack here, and even if it has, like, whatever its strongest water move is, it's still neutral to me. So, I'm just gonna go for a Dragon Claw here to try to grab some chip. It's actually kind of annoying Blastoise at this point. They actually end up grabbing a critical hit, does a bunch of damage, and then they fire off the Hydro Pump. Shout out to Blastoise for actually using its cannons now. Game Freak truly did us a solid, a solid on that one. I cannot believe that he finally, it's been like 20 years. <laughs> they finally got back to the Pokemon Stadium levels to where he uses his cannons. But luckily, you know, I'm able to take it. I can fire off another Dragon Claw, and that is going to finish off the Blastoise. So, now they get a free switch, and they decide to bring in this thing. And I'll tell you what, there is not much scarier in this life than a late-game Volcarona, especially after Stealth Rocks are gone. This thing comes in scot-free and goes for the Quiver Dance here. They know that they can likely take at least one attack from me. Um, they grab the boost, and I do just go for that Dragon Claw here. So what I do is I actually get some super respectable chip damage. And that's actually important because in the back, I have an answer to this if I have enough damage, and that is with the Hitmonlee. So they're going to stay in. They decide to go for the Terra, and they're going to go full water Terra because it would not be a Volcarona if it wasn't going for that Terra there. So it's going to go for that defensive Terra, and at this point, it does actually just fire off the Terra Blast that is going to take care of the prehistoric-ass Entei. So... I have an issue on my hands, but I also do have a problem. I like to keep the Hitmonlee in the back because this thing is just super nice as a late game kind of answer, and this is a great opportunity for it. So I can bring in the Hitmonlee, and I essentially the, the way this set works is I have normal gem, which boosts the power of fake out just a tiny bit, but more importantly, it uses up the item and activates my Unburden ability, which doubles my speed. So even with a Quiver Dance, Hitmonlee will be faster than that thing after Unburden. So 
they're actually going to end up going ahead and switching into the Metagross here. They fake out, obviously, you know, these buddies, the damn Cybertruck out here, he's not going to take a whole lot of damage from that. But I activate that normal gem, and now I'm like, damn, that was actually a really nice defensive switch, because now I find myself in a spot where Hitmonlee kind of has to deal with the the consequences he's set himself up for. But the good news is Volcarona no longer has that Quiver Dance, and that's going to be the most important thing. So I go for the knockoff here. That does get rid of the Choice Band. Confirms Choice Banded Bullet Punch. Ruined my day. But uh, they go for that Meteor Mash. It does knock me out and also gives them the attack boost, which is overall just kind of rude at this point. But... Uh, now we have an extremely close match. It's 2-2, two two. they have the Volcarona in the back, and here I can go into Feraligator. So, what Feraligator does here is, they essentially they can't bullet punch. Even at plus one attack, it's not going to be able to knock me out without the choice band. So, they decide to just go for an attack there, and I outspeed and finish it with a crunch, because sheer force Feraligator with Life Orb is an absolute menace and should be dealt with. But, now their final Pokemon is going to be Volcarona. So, they find themselves in a spot where they can't Quiver Dance or else they die, but... They also have a super effective attack on my last Pokemon in the form of Bug Buzz, which does still have the stab from its original bug typing. So, down to my final Pokemon, and it is going to be the Snake Apple. Young Snapple is coming out here. I am Assault Vest and Max HP, and if there's any chance to live, it's with this thing. I, I'm full special tank. I can go for an energy ball, but it all comes down to this next bug buzz. And ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly why Hydrapple is my favorite new Pokemon in this in this DLC. I'm able to barely hang on and fire off an energy ball to win the game. Assault Vest, Regenerator came in extremely clutch from the Hydrapple. And uh, it could not have been, literally could not have been a closer ending. I thought that was just a fun game overall. And it's really cool to use all these new kind of strategies in Pokemon. So let me know if you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. It really does help out the channel. And I appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Peace out.